Hello guys and welcome in this new video on our OpenGL series. Hope you guys are doing good. The previous video was about drawing our first triangle in OpenGL and we did that using some concept like shaders, uh, vertex attribute pointers, you know, vertex buffer and things like that. Now, the point of this video is to actually emphasize on those concepts that we used in the previous video. What if I want to customize the way my triangle should look like? As you can see on the screen right here, we have different color for each corner. How can I actually do that? So that's the purpose of this video. Before we get started, just want to invite you guys to like this video, subscribe to my channel and also, you know, make sure you share if you find it interesting. So let's get started. If you have been watching along, you probably have this vertex data or vertices, which is not like this one here because I added more. If you remember, I said I want to send more data to the GPU. I want to send the color of each vertex. So you can see this is still the same. This hasn't changed. The three numbers right here specify the position and the three next number will be the color. So we have our position vector and we have our color vector, so to say. And each line here, right here is a vertex. And if you remember, we said vertex could be color, it could be position, it could be uh, texture coordinate, it could be normal. We're going to be talking about texture coordinate and normal vector later. The vertex could be anything, depending on what you want to achieve, you can send whatever you want. The rest here is still normal. We have a vertex buffer. When we want to create our triangle, we need a vertex buffer. The vertex buffer is just a bunch of memory that we allocate on the GPU where we're actually going to be storing this data. So in OpenGL to allocate memory, you simply say generate buffer and you give the type of that buffer and you will get an index or a handle or whatever you want to call that, which actually gives you control on that memory. So whenever you want to access that, to use that for any kind of purpose, you will always reference to this uh, handle right here. Now, one thing which is really important is to mention that the GPU does not know how this data is laid out, how it's actually going to be using that. You just have a bunch of number in the memory, so it doesn't make any sense for him. We need to tell him how he is to interpret these vertices right here, this vertex data. And to actually do that, we need the so-called vertex attribute pointers. So if I switch to my shader right here, I use this here to show you the code of the shader because if I show you the code up here, you won't be able to actually see properly what I'm talking about. We still have our shader as we had before, but I'm just using this to actually visualize it so that you guys can really understand what is going on. So we, as I said, we need to define a layout of our vertices of our vertex data. And as you can see here, I define a layout and we have the first index, which is zero, which define the position and the second one define the vertex color. And you can see that right here, we have index zero, which is, we enable the vertex uh, attribute pointer right here, or array, if you want to call it like that. We enable the zero, the first index, which is zero. I could have enabled it afterwards. Remember OpenGL is a state machine, so it doesn't matter how and when you enable. So, and you can see we set the index, that index right here, which is zero. Here you need to give how many elements. So it has one, two, three. The position has three elements, X, Y, and Z coordinate. The type of those data, it's an enum. In this case, we have a GL enum, which is GL float. It says just float. Now we don't want to normalize. We're going to be talking about that later. And we want to define the stride. The stride, as we explained in the previous video, is how many bytes the computer should move forward to actually get to the next vertex. As you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six size of float byte. So the computer will move six size of float, float byte to, to get to the next vertex. That's the idea of that. And the next thing we want to say, at which index is this data, is this position data starting at the index zero. So for each vertex, we always start by the first one here. So, and we do the same thing for the color, which is the layout with the index one. So it has three data, it's float, and we have just the same process. And the first index is gonna be one, zero, one, two, then three size of float, because we wanna start here. That's why we do this here. 
so you get the point so that's basically why we need vertex attribute pointer to actually tell the gpu how to interpret our data now we basically have the data sent to the gpu if i move to my shader code you can see we have the vertex shader up here and we have the fragment shader and you can see we basically take this color and we use it down here to actually uh, define the color which is going to be used down here so and as you can see we simply send a vector of four because we need the fourth element and that's why we redefine that vector i could have also defined it like this this also does the job so why this also this will simply grab the three element of this and initialize a vector of four with that so that's just wanted to show that because it's also important but i'm going to be talking more about this concept uh, when we learn more about glsl so don't worry about that so you can see right here we get our color and we set this value to that the fragment shader will get that value gl position as you see here is a is a built-in variable so we don't have to you know send this variable to the fragment shader he already knows where to find this gl position because you always need to define the position of the vertex you want to draw on the screen that's why we have this built-in variable which help us define that the fragment shader also has something like that but we're going to be talking about that later so you can then also output this color you see we have out here it's a vector four we have out color and we want to get that color in the fragment shader to actually draw our vertex on the screen to rasterize the pixel and that's why you see we say in vect4 it has to you know to be named the same way as this one because it's actually waiting for this one to come in here now we have our output color our final color which is going to be out and you see we simply say color is vect4 and this we get the result that we want now what i'm doing here is a little bit crazy because this is already a vect4 so i could have just <laughs> put this here i forgot and that would that would actually make the job so if i switch to the code this is exactly what we've done here and as you can see i haven't changed this it doesn't matter so just if i run this you will see we get our triangle with the three colors so it's coming so you see we have our three colors for each you know a uh, corner of our triangle now why does this actually you know interpolate this because he should probably actually get the last vertex the color of the last vertex right because the last vertex is drawn then he will simply draw the last vertex over the others but he doesn't actually do that what opengl does is he interpolate the value of these three colors and you know for each as we move forward he interpolate and we get this effect in the middle right here now we can even do more by actually animating the color of this triangle but we need to send each frame the data to the gpu so that he can use that to actually render things on the screen but we cannot use the vertex attribute to do that because the vet vertex attribute is kind of static so we cannot say we we'll use this to send the color each frame that's where the concept of uniform comes in the game so you see this variable right here is the uniform and one thing i want you to keep in mind is the uniform can be anything in this case we have a vector of three because we want to send a color it could have been an integer float and things like that so you can use all of this type to actually send data even bool boolean and things like that but because i want to send a color i use this vec3 to actually get that result you need to go here and say vec4 u color dot x y and this and you simply want to put one at the end so this is how you can actually use this uniform to set the color of the fragment now if i go back here i need to update that in the code that we have here and the only thing i have to do is to take this and put this here just like that but now how can we send this data to the gpu that's why this gl uniform comes in in place so first of all you need to know the handle or the id of the program you're using to actually draw the current object the current triangle because you want to go inside of that program and grab the uniform the u color uniform and actually set the value of that with this tree value so i just use the sign function up here to calculate the color so this is basically how i did it but 
yeah you could have used any kind of calculation method to actually achieve your colors and things like that and you can see i i say gl uniform now as i said you can send all kind of uniform to the gpu you can see we have gl uniform 1d for decimal number for float you can send matrices you can send vector of two you can send i don't know if you can send text i never tried that but i don't think so <laughs> so basically you can send everything you want you just have to first of all know which shader you're sending that to that's why we're calling this gl get uniform location i want to know inside of this shader and if you remember we created our shader program up here so i want to know inside of this shader where this guy is located that's why i go and get that calling this function this function will return a, an integer which is the location of that uniform and i can simply pass the values that i want it to have just right here and this is basically how you can set a value in your shader and the rest is just normal we use our shader we draw our triangle so if i run this you will see the color of our triangle will be animated basically so you see you got the result on the screen so thank you guys for watching this video hope you guys learned something from it if you did please make sure you leave a comment in the description below like this video also and please share 